The next suborder that we have uh, within Rodentia is our suborder of Myomorpha, and this includes all our mice and any relatives of mice. And the first family that we have within the suborder is our family Dipodidae, and this includes jumping mice and gerboas. Um, these have many, uh, or many have really long hind legs, and some are actually bipedal. They have quite a vast structural diversity. Um, many have morphological adaptations for uh, saltatorial locomotion patterns, so they're often jumping. They have a hystricomorphous skull and a scuriognathus lower jaw. They are semifossorial and they're found in the Nearctic and Ethiopian and Palearctic faunal regions. So normally you would have to know these two species, but I have taken those out for exam purposes. The next family that we have is our family Cricketidae. And these include our New World mice, rats, voles, and hamsters. There's actually nearly 700 species within this family. Um, they have a myomorphous skull and scuriognathus lower jaw. Most of them are terrestrial, some are semi-arboreal and fossorial or semi-aquatic. They have a New World dis distribution. Their size and heterogeneity of the group make um, generalizations about the group kind of difficult because uh, they come in a lot of different sizes and uh, colorations. You will have to know quite a few Alberta species and I'm just going to go through those right now. So the first one is our long-tailed vole or Microtus longicaudus. Um, so this is our long-tailed vole right in front of me here. Yeah, it's kind of this um, stubby sort of looking face. He's quite small with um, sort of a long tail and short hind limbs. And he has some silver um, looking pelage underneath and mainly brown pelage throughout the top. The next species that you'll have to know is our uh, water vole or Microtus richardsoni. This guy is a bit um, larger than the previous one. He doesn't have such a stubby little face and he's more reddish in color, I would say. He has a somewhat longish tail and short little hind limbs. And he also has that counter shading and silvery pelage underneath. So just as a comparison of the two. And we can skip all of these guys because they look very similar to the previous ones. And the next one is our sagebrush vole. So our Lemiscus curtatus. And he is... Um, kind of lighter in color. He has more of this olive color. He has kind of a, a pointier little snout, really small uh, forelimbs as well as hind limbs. And the way that I like to remember him is that his tail is the same length as his hind limbs. And he also um, kind of has that silvery pelage underneath, but is not as drastic as the previous two. So there's that guy. Next we have our southern redback vole. And this guy's kind of easy to distinguish because he's uh, the smallest of the four and also has that red color. Um, his species name is Myotis geperi. And he is quite tiny. His tail is slightly longer than his hind limbs there. And again, he has that red color, as well as that silvery, whitish looking pelage underneath. The next um, species that you'll have to know is the Richards, Richardson's collared lemming. And they come in two different colors, so just so you know the difference between the two. Um, and this guy is Dicrostonyx richardsoni. So here's the white 
pelage, which they have in the winter time. And this is the brown. He has definitely more variation in his coat with those like lines running through. He does not have a tail. So that's kind of a key factor as well as this guy definitely is easy to tell apart. Also has no tail. And yeah, that's the Richards, Richardson's Collared Lemming. Uh, you will also have to know the Northern Bog Lemming. This guy is kind of easy to tell apart because he looks like a little chonk. And he has a really squished face as well as um, almost like a mustache in the front there because of the coloration difference. And he has these really, really short little limbs and again, does not have a tail. So just to show you the comparison between the two lemmings, you can definitely tell the Northern Bog Lemming from the previous one. Muskrat or Ondatra Sibethicus. This guy is the largest from the whole group. And if you've seen a muskrat before, he's pretty easy to tell apart. He has that long, almost like um, tail that can be used uh, for uh, maneuverability through the water. Um, he has quite large hind limbs, not long, but just larger and super long claws as well as long claws in the front. And he does not have that um, silvery coloration, but he's more um, the same color throughout. And this is just a closer look at the jaw, which I have shown before. But these guys have really unique teeth. So I'll just point that out. A few more species within the family Kirketidae that you'll have to remember. Uh, this is Neotoma cinerea, or the bushy-tailed wood rat. He has extremely long vibrissae, which is a nice way to identify this guy. Um, and he's quite fluffy looking, and his little hind limbs are turned upside, as well as he has this bushy-tailed bushy tail compared to the rest of the specimens in this group. So that's our bushy tailed wood rat. Can skip over that guy. This is our northern grasshopper mouse or Onychomus leucogaster. The way that I like to remember him is that he just has this weird looking spot in the middle of his back. <laughs> um, he also has these short little limbs and kind of floppy looking little ears. And he has um, kind of an goldish or um, olive coloration. And then we also have the uh, deer mouse or Paromyscus meniculatus. This guy is easy to tell uh, as compared to the previous little guy because he has really floppy ears and a really long tail. So just to show you the comparison of those two. And yeah. The next family that we have is our family Muridae and this includes our old world rats, mice, and gerbils. Um, th all of these guys have a myomorphous skull and Skiriognathus lower jaw. They eat plants, invertebrates, or small vertebrates. Most species are nocturnal as well as terrestrial. They have a worldwide distribution since rats and mice are found basically everywhere uh, on this planet. And um, they have cuspidate or prismatic teeth. The first specimen that we have within this uh, group is our um, crested mand rat. And he has a really interesting 
looking skull. There's um, like no, um, there's no gaps at all or anything for muscle attachment through his skull. So he, this one is quite an interesting specimen. Um, we also have a few different uh, specimens here of some gerbils and uh, what looks to be like hamsters and things, but you don't need to remember these. This is just to kind of give you an overview. Uh, the only two species that you will have to remember is our house mouse and the Norway rat. So our house mouse is M Mus musculus, and he basically looks like a little mouse. He has a long tail, kind of really floppy ears, as well as this grayish coloration, and he has the same kind of coloration throughout. And then we also have our Norway rat, which again looks like a rat. This is Ratus norveg norvegicus, and he has this really long rat-like tail, kind of larger hind limbs, and has this orangey um, reddish coloration.